continuing our discussion in the front of the thigh now let's discuss about uh, what are the cutaneous arteries which are present in this region all the cutaneous arteries at the front of the thigh are the branches of femoral artery so here if you see this is the femoral triangle in the femoral triangle the medial most structure which is present it is called as the femoral vein the medial most structure is the femoral vein lateral to the femoral vein you have the femoral artery so here i will draw this is the femoral artery and more lateral to the femoral artery we can find femoral nerve so more laterally we can find this is the femoral nerve so in the femoral triangle you can see three important structures v a n vein femoral vein femoral artery and femoral nerve so from these uh, femoral artery from the femoral triangle the cutaneous arteries supplies are mainly seen at the front of the thigh as i already mentioned you that there are totally three cutaneous arteries which are seen at the front of the thigh and all are the branches of the femoral artery okay so now the first one is called as the superficial external pudendal artery so i will write here superficial external pudendal artery okay if you see the superficial external pudendal artery here this artery actually crosses the spermatic cord let us assume that this is the spermatic cord okay so the superficial external pudendal artery crosses the spermatic cord means it runs medially crosses the spermatic cord and supplies the external genitalia and supplies the external genitalia so one point i want to tell you here that the femoral artery is the deeper structure which is present in the femoral triangle which means this artery is actually covered by the superficial fascia as well as deep fascia the deep fascia which is covering the deep fascia which is covering the femoral artery as well as the femoral vein specifically is called as fascia cribrosa or cribriform fascia okay generally uh, the deep fascia of the front of the thigh or the deep fascia of the entire thigh is called as a fascia lata the same fascia lata over the femoral artery and femoral vein it is called as the cribriform fascia so while the artery coming from deeper to the superficial because uh, the femoral uh, the cutaneous arteries we are what we are studying now are the arteries which are present in the superficial fascia but the femoral artery lies deeper to the deep fascia which means it has to pierce the deep fascia the cutaneous artery has to pierce the deep fascia to reach superficial region right that is the reason the superficial external pudendal artery <clears throat> after it arises in the femoral triangle from the femoral artery it pierces cribriform fascia runs medially to cross the anterior aspect of the spermatic cord to supply the skin over the external genitalia okay so we finished the the first artery called as superficial external pudendal artery okay now let us discuss about the second artery is called as the superficial epigastric artery let us assume that this is the umbilicus if you see the superficial epigastric artery it is also coming superficially means it also a uh, pierces cribriform fascia runs upwards medially to travel towards the umbilicus it runs upwards medially 
to travel towards the umbilicus and supplies the skin below the level of umbilicus or you can say that it supplies the skin over the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall below the level of umbilicus. I will repeat again. There are totally three cutaneous arteries arises from femoral artery. Okay. The first one is superficial external pudendal artery supplies the skin over the external genitalia. Second one is called as the superficial epigastric artery. So here I will write the second one. It is called as the superficial epigastric. Superficial epigastric artery. It supplies the skin of the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall below the level of umbilicus. Right? And uh, the third one is called as the superficial external iliac artery okay the third one is called as the superficial external iliac artery so if you see the superficial external iliac artery so this artery it this artery fears uh, pierces fascia lata because i told you that uh, cribriform fascia is a deep fascia which is present at the anterior aspect or cribriform fascia is the deep fascia which is covering the femoral artery as well as femoral vein. Okay. Only in the anterior aspect of the femoral artery and femoral vein only you can see the cribriform fascia. But entirely you have a fascia lata. Okay. For example, I will show you the overall structure here. Let us assume that let us assume that this is the skin of the front of the thigh okay this is the skin immediately after the skin you have a subcutaneous tissue right subcutaneous fat after that you have the superficial fascia so let us uh, assume that the second structure is called as the this is the skin this is called as the superficial fascia after the superficial fascia you have deep fascia right so let us uh, assume that this is the deep fascia this is the deep fascia okay so in the deep fascia i am leaving a small area which is anterior to the femoral artery as well as femoral vein this is called as fascia cribrosa or cribriform fascia so what is the difference between the fascia lata as well as fascia uh, like cribriform fascia nothing but same fascia cribrosa is actually covering the saphenous opening which means the you know the great saphenous vein is a superficial vein and the great saphenous vein comes and drains into the femoral vein so while it is draining into the femoral vein that area means uh, that foramen is mainly covered by a fascia called as the cribriform fascia okay or we can say the opening the opening of the great saphenous vein which is draining into the femoral vein which is actually covered by the fascia called as the cribriform fascia which is nothing but called as the deep fascia okay which is located anterior to the femoral artery as well as femoral vein so here i will draw let us see this is the femoral artery okay and uh, i will draw this is the femoral vein here this is the femoral vein and uh, lateral to the artery you have the femoral nerve here okay so let us assume that this is the femoral nerve so by this you can say that uh, anterior to the femoral artery as well as femoral vein anterior to the femoral artery as well as femoral vein the deep fascia which is present is called as the fascia cribrosa but the artery what we are talking now superficial external iliac artery is running laterally which means the artery is running laterally right so it is not associated with the fascia Cribrosa. So, this artery pierces the deep fascia of the thigh called as fascia lata, right? Now, it pierces the fascia lata. After piercing the fascia lata, the artery becomes deeper. After piercing the deep fascia of the thigh, the artery becomes deeper. The dotted line means assume that it is going deeper. 
So I will repeat again the third cutaneous artery called as superficial superficial circumflex iliac artery. The third one is called as superficial circumflex iliac artery. So this superficial circumflex iliac artery runs upwards laterally behind the inguinal ligament or behind the lateral end of the inguinal ligament to reach finally to reach the anterior superior iliac spine to reach anterior superior iliac spine at the anterior superior iliac spine it take part in the anastomosis with the three arteries remember one point here uh, the superficial circumflex iliac artery sometimes is also called as the superficial external iliac artery because it is passing externally towards the uh, ilium that is the reason in some authors also mentions uh, mentioned that the superficial circumflex iliac artery is also called as the superficial external iliac artery okay so don't confuse with uh, these two names both are nothing but same so the superficial circumflex iliac artery runs laterally piercing fascia lata passes behind the lateral end of the inguinal ligament to reach anterior superior iliac spine so at the anterior superior iliac spine it take part in the anastomosis with the three important arteries okay the first artery it take part in the anastomosis with the three important arteries the first artery is called as the deep circumflex iliac artery okay so i will write here deep circumflex iliac deep circumflex iliac artery so and the second artery which is taking part in the anastomosis the second artery which is taking part in the anastomosis is called as superior gluteal artery so the second artery is called as the superior gluteal artery okay so after superior gluteal artery the third artery is called as the lateral lateral circumflex iliac artery and this lateral circumflex iliac artery is also called as the lateral circumflex femoral artery okay the lateral circumflex iliac artery is also called as the lateral circumflex femoral artery so there are totally three arteries which are taking part in the anastomosis one is the deep circumflex iliac artery second one is the superior gluteal artery and third one is the lateral circumflex femoral artery because the lateral circumflex femoral artery also reaches towards the iliac crest and anterior superior iliac spine that is the reason it is also considered to be the lateral circumflex iliac artery these are the three arteries which take part in the anastomosis with the superficial circumflex iliac artery which is the third cutaneous branch of the femoral artery right these are the three cutaneous arteries what we can see at the front of the thigh right so after we study the cutaneous arteries now let us discuss about uh, what are the cutaneous lymph nodes which are located at the front of the thigh so our next topic should be <coughs> the cutaneous lymph nodes which are present at the front of the thigh remember that there are three lymphatic groups which are present at the front of the thigh three lymphatic groups which are located at the front of the thigh arranged like an alphabet t for example same i will show here let us assume that this is the inguinal ligament right and uh, this is the thigh region here okay this is the inguinal ligament so here the group the lymphatic group which are arranged are as a alphabet t so one is called as the vertical group and another one is called as the horizontal group okay so there are uh, 
three lymphatic groups which are arranged as an alphabet T. One is the vertical group and another one is called as the horizontal group. So here if you see, the vertical group is at the lower side. That is the reason I can mention these are the lower vertical. We are talking about the cutaneous lymph nodes which are present at the front of the thigh. So remember the alphabet T. So the tail of the T is called as the lower vertical and the horizontal part is called as the horizontal groups. The horizontal group of lymph nodes are again divided into medial as well as lateral. That is the reason medial horizontal, medial horizontal and next one is called as the lateral horizontal. Okay, one is the medial horizontal and another one is the lateral horizontal. These are the cutaneous lymph nodes which are located at the front of the thigh. So after cutaneous lymph nodes, now we finished what are the cutaneous vessels and cutaneous lymph nodes and cutaneous arteries and if you talk about the cutaneous veins, uh, all the cutaneous veins it drains into the femoral vein only. Remember that we studied uh, the three cutaneous arteries. What are they? Superficial external pudendal artery, superficial epigastric artery and uh, superficial um, circumflex iliac artery. All these arteries uh, are the cutaneous arteries and uh, the cutaneous veins also follow the same arteries which means the superficial external pudendal vein, the superficial epigastric vein, the superficial um, circumflex iliac veins all the, these three veins comes and drains into the femoral vein. So remember the veins follow the arteries. So by this you got a overall idea about what are the cutaneous arteries which are present, cutaneous nerves and the lymph nodes and all these uh, um, are the contents of the superficial fascia of the front of the thigh.